Welcome, everyone. Today, it's our pleasure to have Eric Primozik from the University of Alberta, who will be speaking on Motivic Steamrod Operations and Characteristic P. Thank you for inviting me. Um, so, I'll start off by describing our setup. So, take S to be a base scheme. Uh, really, it's going to be satisfy some additional properties that we carry. Um, but for our applications, absolutely it's just going to be the spectrum of the field or the spectrum of the PDR. Um, and we'll consider the category of smooth quasi projective varieties over S. Um, then we can consider two important categories. Um, these are going to be the motivic homotopy category. So the motivic homotopy category of S is obtained, I guess, in short by, you can consider simplicial species uh, on schemes over S. And then you localize with respect to the Isnevich topology, and you also Force the condition that basically the affine line should behave as the unit interval. Um, and then from there we can stabilize with respect to smashing by P1 to obtain. the motivic stable homotopy category. So these are categories introduced by Morel Wojtowski and others that basically allow you to do things from algebraic topology and algebraic geometry. So that's a pretty big deal since those are two very different roles. So in algebraic topology, you have sort of a unit interval, and we want to replace that in algebraic geometry with the outline line. Um, and so yeah, then you have these functors. Um, you can go from the category of smooth schemes over S to the quantitative homotopy category. And then by taking infinite suspension, you can go to the motivic stable homotopy category. Okay. Um, so you can do things like uh, talk about Marvitoris sequences, talk about um, this is where different cohomology theories live, like motivic cohomology, which we're going to talk about, and K theory and homomorphism. Um, so I'm interested in motivic cohomology, so let's talk about that. So yeah, uh, so I know what's homotopy category, but uh, what's the homotopy homotopy category? The motivic homotopy. Yeah, yeah. This thing here. Yeah. Basically taking some special pre sheaves on this, and then you localize with respect to. Uh, Bosco localization with respect to this Navish topology and uh, A1. So you want to make the two pre sheaves that into into what? Into that are simplicial pre sheaves. Simplicial pre sheaves. Yeah. Um, I guess the, the construction isn't as important, more the properties that we care about. So in this category here, you take A1, it identifies with just a point. So we're sort of forcing that. Um, next, I want to talk about motivic cohomology. But I also say that uh, my talk tomorrow will have more applications and be more down to earth than uh, today's talk. So, so motivic cohomology. So. We're going to specialize now to our base scheme being the field. And if we have smooth quasi projective variety over that base field, then 
Voivodsky and others introduced bi-graded cohomology groups on Fs. These are called the motivic cohomology groups. So um, I don't want to define them, but I'll just tell you what are some important ones for our purposes. Um, so if you consider things in by degree 2n n, then you cover child groups of co-dimension n. So I'm going to talk tomorrow about why we care about these things. They uh, allow you to study problems in algebra and algebraic geometry. They're very important. And for some other examples of motivic cohomology groups, if you look at the motivic cohomology of a field, this is isomorphic to the Milner K theory. The add mineral chain uh, K theory group of your field F. So, in general, even though you think of F as being a point, it has non trivial cohomology, which that doesn't have in topology. So, already things are a bit more complicated. Is this connected in any way to the cohomology of X as a topological space? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Um, that was one of the main things proved by Wojtowski, uh, and that is that, let's see if I get the right side. Let's just take the characteristic of F to be zero, to be safe and take P to be a prime. Then for, uh, let's see if I get the right degree. I think it's I less than or equal to J. Um, motivic cohomology degree IJ of X with coefficients, uh, finite coefficients. This is isomorphic to just the tau cohomology degree I. Tensor J times. And so if you take back to be the complex numbers, then yeah, this, this that's how it's connected to ordinary cohomology. But uh, U of T stands for the uh, P roots of unity in your field. Um, so yeah, in general, you might care about these groups here and these other groups can give you information about these things too. So this is called the, I mean this is part of the Black-Cato conjecture, this statement here is the uh, Davidson lindsay bomb conjecture, which is proved by the complexity. I think you can take characters that got not equal to T, but yeah. Um, so we want to consider then operations on these Motivic cohomology groups. So, interested in Steenrod operations. So, I'm going to talk about what's already been done by Wojtowski. So, take P a prime with P not equal to the characteristic of a base field dot. Then Wojtowski constructed operations on motivic cohomology with FP coefficients. So, these are operations PN so for a natural number N from Cohomology group goes from degree IJ to degree A 
h i plus 2n p minus 1, and j plus n p minus 1. These are contravariant functors, so you get pullback maps, and then they satisfy important properties that I'll get to in a few minutes, such as Cartan formula stem relations. Um, these were most famously used by Wetzky to prove the Milner and Block Cato conjecture, which states that there is an isomorphism from the Milner K theory of your base field, mod P, to a tau cohomology. So the case where P is equal to 2 is Milner, and then P bigger than 2, mod Kato. Um, so this gives you information then about the tau cohomology, which you might care about. Uh, since this has uh, simpler properties. So, I want to think about these Steenrod operations more functorially. So, we'll introduce a couple of objects. So, um, there's an object of the motivic Eisenberg coin spectrum that represents motivic cohomology, just as in topology, except for here we have bi-graded cohomology groups. And then there is Eisenberg point spaces in the motivic homotopy category theory. So K, I, J, C, that also represents most of the cohomology, uh, degree I, J. So, if you want to define Steenard operations on FP coefficients, so it suffices to define, uh, say what they do on the object representing most of the cohomology with FP coefficients. Um, so rather than getting into a Wetzky's construction, I want to get into a simpler construction that you can do just for Chow groups, where you can see what's going on more. So for p is equal to 2, let's just take p is equal to 2 for simplicity. Um, and I'll tell you how you can construct Steenrod squares just rather not on all of the cohomology, but on child groups with mod 2 coefficients. So these are a special case of most of the cohomology. And so this construction that I'm about to describe is given by uh, Brosnan. So just as in topology, the way you do this is you want to consider the action of mu2 or d mod 2 on cycles on this product here. So to do that, I need to tell you something about the child groups of the classifying space of d mod 2. So by the way, you can have a, uh, assume characteristic of your field is not 2. You can identify mu2 with mod 2. Um, then there's a way to define and classify space and algebraic geometry of d mu 2, which is d z mod 2, and this is given by O of minus 2 minus the zero section, where O of minus 1 is a line bundle on P infinity, so you tensor it twice. Um, now the child 
groups of this guy, d mu 2, are given by just the polynomial ring with d mod 2 coefficients on a single element h, where h is given by pulling back the natural hyperplane of k infinity, which you can identify with dt. So this superscript here means co-dimension one. Um, then the way you can define Steenrod squared for child groups with mod two coefficients is to take x smooth over f, and then start off with co-dimension n cycles on x. Mod two coefficients, and then we can map this to so to a cycle the co-dimension n and x. You can consider its product alpha cross alpha. Alpha goes to alpha cross alpha, and this is invariant under the action of d mod 2 on x cross x, right? It's, you flip them, you get the same thing. Um, so this gives us then a class alpha cross alpha in the mu 2 equivariant child group of x cross x. Then if I let delta from x to x cross x denote the diagonal map, from here I can pull back by delta to get a class in chow 2n mu 2 of x. Now the action of d mod 2 or mu 2 in the diagonal here is trivial, so this is the same thing as chow 2n of x cross d mu 2. Now, from this description of d mu 2, it's cellular. So then the child groups of x cross d mu 2 is just a tensor product of child group of x with child group of d mu 2. So in this way, you can then write that the pullback of alpha cross alpha is equal to sum for i greater than zero of, so you have these classes h to the i, which additively generate the child groups of mu 2. And then you just define the Steenrod square on alpha by being the coefficient. So this is meant for everything has to add up to degree 2n. Um, so n minus, yeah. So then this gives you Steenrod squared degree 2i of alpha in the child group of n plus i of x minus. And I'm doing the grading that you use in Motivic Homology, where you're doing it times two. Usually for child groups, uh, they don't write the two here, so that's provided. Um, so in this way, you can define Steenrod squares just like you would do with homology. And then they satisfy expected names like a done relations, Cartan formula. Um, Instability, instability, and so on. And Voivodsky's construction is more complicated, but sort of uses the same idea of 
considering action of DMA to um, you know the product or two things. So what about in characteristic P? So when the coefficient field is equal to the characteristic of your base field. P is a prime number. Um, here the construction, well first a couple things go wrong. Uh, one is that you no longer can identify P with my P. Because if the characteristic of F is P, then what are the P roots of unity in F? It's just one is just itself, right? So you can no longer get this identification. And even if you play around with Z mod P, um, there's, there's a result of Morel Rybotsky that says that the classifying space of B Z mod P is contractible. So it doesn't have any interesting cohomology groups like it did over here. So basically this construction from Brosnan or more generally Rybotsky it doesn't work when the uh, characteristic of your field is a prime number is the same as your coefficient field. Now when the characteristics aren't equal, we had Steenot operations. Um, but basically there haven't been any uh, Steenot operations in this case other than, I believe, P1 on char groups, which is the other field. Um, so I want to discuss the problem then of how you can get operations in this case. So to do that, I'm going to describe some prior work on the dual steam of algebra. Or dual motivics. So the way we're going to get operations in this case is that we're going to want to basically take operations that exist in characteristic zero, sort of fit them to characteristic P, this finite characteristic case. So to do that, we need some uh, statements about how we can do that, why things work functorially. So I'm going to recall some constructions Spitzvik and uh, Franklin. So Spitzvik for S at base game, and it satisfies some additional properties, but I don't want to state that. Um, we can consider a certain spectrum that people call the Spitzvik spectrum. It's in the stable homotopy category. And it satisfies some nice properties. So if you take S to be a, a field, so I won't write the spec here, but then this spectrum represents motivic cohomology. Nice 
functorial properties. And so Spitzvik proved that this spectrum satisfies the following last condition for amorphism of schemes. Um, you have induced functors of derived pullback. So going from stable homotopic category S2 to S1. And it has a right adjoint given by derived push forward. Going from stable homotopic category of S1 to S2. Then this Schmitzvik spectrum uh, behaves nicely with respect to pullback. That the pullback of the spectrum defined over S2 is isomorphic to the spectrum defined over S1. Then, using the spectrum, um, Martin and Spitzvik studied the problem of sort of considering dual, the dual Steinron algebra and the equal characteristic P case. So, uh, the last I checked was two from 2018. So. Take K to be a field of character set P, a prime number. And you can still consider mu P as a group scheme, the pth roots of unity over K. So as a point, uh, as a space, it's just a point, and then maybe think of it as sort of being an infinitesimal thickening of the point. Uh, if you write one, I can write it as spec of the kx, x inverse mod x to the p minus one like that. So it just consists of one point, since this is x minus 1 to the p. Um, and you can also still consider the classifying space of this group scheme here, the tau classifying space, as before. Isomorphic to O of minus P minus the zero section over P infinity. Now the motivic homology of B mu P is con uh, computed by Lebutsky, and in our situation. Take it with that p coefficients. It's fairly simple. So for b v mod p, it's trivial, but it turns out for d mu p, it's still not trivial. So this is isomorphic to the motivic homology of a point um, along with two generators. So I'm going to take a power series ring. B U mod Q squared, where um, B is in H21 of B and P, which is the same thing as considering 
uh, chow one on P mod P. Mod P. And that comes from the first turn class of map from D and P to BGM, which is P infinity. So pull back the natural hyperplane class. And then U is a class in H11 such that it comes from torsion and the integral cohomology of this guy, um, such that the Bachstein applied to U is equal to B. So to sort of get at this problem of defining steam rod operations in the equal characteristic case, we want to sort of replace E mod P with this mu P here. So what uh, Martin and Spitzer considered was the dual steam rod algebra. So that's just going to be defined as the homotopy of HFP smashed with HFP. Um, so in algebraic geometry and our metodic homotopy theory, uh, homotopy is bi-graded. There's two different spheres. There's a uh, simplicial one, given by S1, and then there's also one given by uh, P1, or just GM if you want. So homotopy in algebraic geometry is uh, going to be bi-graded here. So Schwitzvik constructed a, I think it always exists anyways, a coaction map in general for all phase schemes from the motivic cohomology uh, on the motivic cohomology of E and P. So this goes from the motivic cohomology of B and P to the dual spin rod algebra. And then since uh, you're dealing with power series, you have to take completed tensor products. So we'll add this half there. And then tensor with the motivic cohomology of beam P again. of the motivic homology of DMP, we can describe sort of what this does on the generators. So it sends the class U to U plus sum from I is greater than or equal to zero of some classes tau I tensored with B to the P to the I, where tau I is the dual spin on algebra. Maps to sum from j is greater than equal to 1 to xi j e p to the j, where xi j is in the dual string not algebra in degree 2 p to the j. Minus two, and then p to the j minus one. And so there's a similar map in just topology with singular cohomology. And 
basically you want to define steam rod operations that are dual to these elements in the dual steam rod algebra. And that should tell you sort of how they act on you. If you just match it up with the dual, you'll get the corresponding element over here. Um, so using this coaction map, you want to say something about the homotopy of HFP smash HFPK. So just as an apology, uh, you can do the following. You can consider finite sequences of non-negative integers where the epsilons are all either 0 or 1 and the r's are just greater than or equal to 0. Then we get a class omega alpha given by doing tau 0 to the epsilon 0, psi 1 to the r1, tau 1 to epsilon 1, and so on in the dual steam rod algebra. So, I don't know, right, it's, uh, let's see, let's call it 5 degree P alpha Q alpha. Now, so this is in the homotopy of HFP smash HFP. So then this gives you a map from suspension of P alpha Q alpha of HFP to HFP smash HFP. And this is a morphism of left HFP modules. So I'll do not the homotopy category of left HFP modules by P HFP. Okay. Um, then if you sum over all sequences alpha that are finite like this, then Get a map like this. I'll call it psi alpha, or sorry, just uh, psi sub k. From this direct sum of suspensions of the Eisenberg plane spectrum to HFP smash HFP. There's actually, uh, this morphism exists for any base scheme here. So if I were to put in a field of characteristic zero here, it gives you an isomorphism. Um, And then I think it was Wojtowski who conjectured that this is an isomorphism in overall base schemes. And what Franklin and Spitzik were able to prove was the following. And that is that um, psi k is split mono. So it admits a retraction. by comparing it to the corresponding isomorphism if I were to take this and replace it with the field of characteristic zero where it's known. Um, okay. So it turns out that this is good enough to allow you to define new operations in the equal characteristic. So this is where, uh, where my own paper starts. So for a natural number n, we have the sequence. 
sides alpha is equal to zero and zero alpha alpha zero. And then we have omega alpha is equal to psi one to n in the dual scheme of algebra. Now in characteristic zero, this psi one to the n is dual to the operation p1 to the n. Or sorry, just p to the n. So we don't have any operation yet in characteristic p, but sort of motiv motivated by this, we're going to define them by being dual to the side one to the n, which exists in our row. So let me say how to do that. Um, so by a junction, So take that retraction R, so that maps to the sum over all sequences alpha, suspension P alpha, Q alpha of HFP, and then to get something that's dual to psi 1 to the n, you project down to alpha is equal to this sequence here. So if you project down then to suspension of uh, I should really call this alpha naught or something or alpha n. So project down to 2n p minus 1, n p minus 1. So we have this morphism here of late left HFP modules. So by adjunction, that gives you that n. That we'll call pn. From HFP to suspension to n p minus one and p minus one. Sorry, of HFP. So this is giving new Steinert operations. Um, prior to this paper of Frank and Spitzvik, the only operation that existed was the first Dean Rod square on mod two child groups and the equal characteristic case. So we have these operations for all numbers n. And there's another way you can describe these operations as in an equivalent way as coming from characteristic zero operations. So to do that, we take a DDR with residue field, so DDR D. Residue field K and so that's characteristic P and it has field of fractions that's in characteristic zero given by some field that we'll call K, uh, big K. So to do this in general, if I mean if little K is perfect, you can take do the uh, bit vector construction and then for k not perfect, you have to take a subring of the vector ring called the uh, ring called the code ring. Um, anyways, so to describe this geometrically as you have a map i from spec k, the residue field, to spec of the DDR, and 
And then you have the generic point given by the field of fractions. Now, from before, there's a the specific spectrum of the milk by HFPD living in the stable homotopy category of D. And remember, it behaves nicely with respect to pullback. So there's an isomorphism from the pullback of this spectrum to the usual motivic homology over little k. So using this isomorphism then and the natural transformation from, so the note by pullback of eta from pull back to pull back, push forward, and pull back, we then get a map from spectrum over a characteristic P to the pull back followed by push forward and pull back over the DDR. Um, and then, as I said, when I pull back from any tomorphism of base games, I get the usual uh, motivic homology, so I can replace this guy by the pull back of the push forward of the island bird McLean spectrum in characteristic uh, zero. Now, something that Franklin and Spitzvik showed was that this map over here admits a retraction. So, abbreviated FS. So they showed that there exists a retraction. the map over here, so from pullback of the push forward of HFT, uh, the K to a motivic homology in characteristic P. So what this gives you then is you get a map from Steenrod operations in characteristic zero to Steenrod operations in characteristic P, finite characteristic. So I'll call this phi. And it's given by using this retraction over here. So So I need to say, I have a steam run operation in characteristic zero, I need to say where does it go in characteristic P. So we're just going to play around with these functors. Um, so take, what's a good letter to call it? Uh, what is called F. Take F, a steam run operation in characteristic zero. So it's given by a map from the eisenberg McQuain spectrum to some suspension of it. So it's a steam run operation of by degree Call it IJ. So, how do we get a steam operation in characteristic P? So, what we do is we start off on the Eisenberg McLean spectrum in characteristic P, and then you do that unit map to pullback of the push forward of HFPK. And then you apply, just by using that these guys are functors, you just apply um, pullback, 
push forward to this app. And then get a map to pull back, push forward of the suspension and IJ of HFPK. And then use that we have this retraction over here to go back down to suspension of IJ of motivic cohomology in character safety. So this gives us a map then from Steenron operations in characteristic zero to characteristic P. So you said something about the, the Ks, the little Ks and the big Ks that you're applying this to. I mean, is the little K arbitrary? Yeah. Is this to an arbitrary field of characteristic P? Correct. You can always find a uh, yeah, DDR using that to call into the construction. Um, and so yeah, you had these operations before PN, as I said. Okay, so my question then is, did they exist for small k before? I mean, when you have small k, say k is an algebraic closed field of, of FP, the algebraic closure of FP, then, then in the did equal, these things exist before? There case? weren't any operations in the, in the equal characteristic case before. Oh. Other than the Bachstein and the first Dean Rod square and chop groups. Yeah, but these aren't related to that construction at all, I think. Uh, I haven't looked into it yet. I'm, okay. I'm guessing they are, but I haven't yeah, looked into it too much. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, and this satisfies the property that this Dean Rod operation that existed in characteristic zero before are equal to these new operations that we defined um, in characteristic P. And it, I don't know how to show that um, this sort of commutes with composition over here, but I do know how to show it at least on chow groups. So, um, We can then basically get all the desired properties for string out operations here by getting them from character six zero using this map. And there's some technicalities where I can only get it for the special class of motivic cohomology given by child groups. So um, you get event relations. are given by, so these are the operations I'm going to take in characteristic P. So PA composed of PB is equal to some sum from J is equal to zero to floor A over P of minus one to a plus j times see this following binomial coefficient p minus one times e minus j minus one uh, choose a minus p j so it looks just like the the uh, relations topology times p a plus b minus j composed of pj. And so this is only on chop groups, mod 2 chop groups. And this follows, uh, not mod 2, mod p, this follows from the adem relations holding in character c0.
DNOT operation applied to their product. It has the same thing as you would expect with topology. So some J is zero to I of P J X P I minus J X of uh, Y. And this comes from, so I don't want to write the details. This comes from writing down a collection map on the child ring of X. And then we also have the property uh, of them being the peak power. So PN from CH upper N mod P to CH PN is just the Frobenius on the child ring. So it's just given by taking class alpha and going to alpha to the peak. Um, and it follows from the characteristic zero result by comparing it to that. And there's also the last thing I write is instability. That is that um, Pn of x is equal to zero for x codimension co m cycle with m less than. So basically, this the operations on child groups satisfy all the desired properties that you would want. And it's uh, still not known uh, whether they do on all of the homology, but as I'll discuss tomorrow, this is good enough to get new applications to problems in algebra. So I'll stop there. Thank you. Are there any questions, comments? So yeah, maybe a question here. Uh, yeah, the slide before the <laughs> the, uh, the Adam relation. So you said that, that holds yeah, uh, on child group. Uh -huh. So what's the property? I'm, I'm not in the general serial algebra. Uh, what is it? It's not known. I'm, I'm I you don't, don't know how to prove that yet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The problem with extending these things to more typical homology, at least uh, for my proofs, is that I don't know that the dual student algebra has the desired property. So uh, Franklin and Spitzvik showed that um, the expected part is a retract of the actual thing. Uh, if they're actually equal, then the proofs would sort of go through to, yeah, extend to all the things. Oh, and maybe a comment on that. Uh, in the unequal case, that was a theorem of uh, uh, so oh, Kelly, Kelly, yeah, Kelly, 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 Kelly as well. Well. right. I think Kowalski was in characteristic zero. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. So if we could prove that in the equal characteristic case, then your argument would go through. Correct. Right. And so yeah, the, in the next talk there'll be uh, more down to earth applications. How to do that in Other questions? Oh, let's thank the speaker again.